farm, family, community. This is Midwest Farm Weekly. Good morning and thank you for spending part of your day with us here at Midwest Farm Weekly. Local dairy breakfasts and events have been an iconic part of Wisconsin culture during June Dairy Month for nearly 50 years. Today we tour the farm hosting Oconto County Celebration. Well, it's good for people to know where their dairy food products come from. I mean, it used to be that it seemed like everybody's grandfather was on a farm or their great grandfather farmed. And now so many people are so far away from farming that um, they have no idea really, you know, where a lot of how it works. At Shallow Acres in Lena, some of the most important business meetings happen around the kitchen table. Definitely the only job where you can have lunch with the family every day and get to go in and see the whole gang. The family has been farming together for generations. Uh, I've always been involved from a young age and it's really just been in the last couple years where it's really hit home that, yeah, I gotta stay. My dad bought it in 1976 and then when I was a senior, graduated from high school in 78, then I bought it from him. And uh, we uh, did a lot of uh, uh, updates, uh, did a lot of work to it. Uh, I had a lot of help from uh, my brothers and my uh, couple uncles. Now, 38 cows call Shallow Acres home, spending their days soaking in the sun and grazing. They also get a hearty diet from crops raised by the family. We did like diversify some. We raised like some like cash crops along with dairy. And we started getting into some environmental practices such as cover crops and like growing rye and triticale and then uh, harvesting them in addition to like alfalfa and other feeds to feed the animals. Milk from the farm is sold through a cooperative, sometimes bottled for fluid milk, sometimes used for cheese or other dairy products. Well, it's prestigious to know that we're bringing such a quality product to so many people and it's really good to know that where your product comes from, get to see that and know that it's crafted with care at every level. The Shallows name each member of their herd. There's always a theme. We do TV shows, board games. We have Colonel Mustard, Blanche, Miss Scarlet, um, candy bars, uh, Magnum PI is a big family. We have Higgins, Magnum, Ice Pick, Rick, the whole gang. It's been good. It's been a great life. Um, so happy that I was able to raise children out in the country on the farm. Um, it fit in perfectly with homeschooling. And now so many more people will learn lessons about agriculture as this family hosts breakfast on the farm. One thing we hope people walk away with is um, knowing that like small farms can still be uh, successful and sustainable. Even the littlest members of the family take pride in their role on the farm. Well, Thaddeus is our grandson. He loves to come to the farm and that's always got to go to the barn to see the cows and the calves and the cat and got to hit all the areas and do it all because he loves it and it, it's it's nice to see because that's how it was with my son starting out you know he had to explore everything and now Thaddeus is exploring everything and no doubt wants to follow in that footstep so far you know he loves cows and has his tractors and so we'll see where that goes. June Dairy Month is a special time to discover, taste, and celebrate the living legacy of Wisconsin dairy. And you can do just that at Shallow Acres in Lena, Sunday, June 9th. Breakfast is served from 7 to noon with activities continuing until 1. To find a dairy breakfast near you, head to the Midwest Farm section of wearegreenbay.com. We have a few more ideas for you because Outagamie County is also celebrating June Dairy Month this weekend. The host farm is in Bear Creek, south of Clintonville. Erickson Dairy Farm is home to 620 cows and another 450 young animals. The family started farming there in 1980. They welcomed the community in 2013 for breakfast on the farm, and they're excited to showcase the updates they have made. The event benefits agriculture year-round, as Local 5 Live found out when they visited for a preview.
Yes, the, the proceeds from breakfast that we have go to support um, Al, um, Adventures in Dairyland, which is continuing education in the elementary schools in the county, and that, that's what kind of brings that up. We do other events, sponsor other things throughout the year for that, um, to bring in the awareness. And as well as the volunteer groups that come out do get a little bit of money that we reinvest in the community, so other nonprofits gets to benefit too from, from the good that we do and the awareness in the dairy industry. A reminder that breakfast is on Sunday. Erickson Dairy Farm is located on County Road D in Bear Creek. Those uh, events are happening starting in the morning at 8, and I'm excited to be there and seeing. One more option for you this weekend. Manitowoc County also celebrates June Dairy Month at Liberty Land Farms in Valders. They milk 300 cows using five robots. The technology that's involved over the last years has really, really uh, taken off and uh, it's good for people to see it. Like a lot of farms in Wisconsin, uh, we truly are a family farm. My husband, my dad, and the older generation yet, my grandpa and grandma are still involved. Um, and now Zach and I have a daughter, Olivia, on the farm, so it's really cool to see um, three, four generations all right here on the farm together. And this breakfast on the farm is also on Sunday happening at Liberty Land Farms in Valders. This event running 8 until noon. Welcome back. For more than 75 years, Hilbert has celebrated our state's, state's rich dairy history with a focus on cheese. Mike is here with more on this tradition. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Good morning. So what is a cheese derby? Uh, it started out being a collection of cheese factories that wanted to promote their products. Okay. Uh, since then, um, myself, brilliant FFA alumni, Hilbert Fire Department and St. Mary's Church and School have uh, taken it on ourselves to keep it going. And you have added a bunch of fun events. Uh, yes, uh, this year we will be providing, uh, Sargento has sponsored horse and buggy rides oh, for free. Okay. Um, we will have a miniature golf course set up. Okay. Uh, food and beverages, free cheese. It's free to sign up for a cheese raffle and you go home with cheese. Okay. Uh, donated um, for entertainment. We have Rocker who is celebrating their yeah. 50th year as a band wow. together um, for entertainment. And we also per have bingo at the event. So do we pay an admission price or how does that work? It's free to come in. Okay. Uh, beverages and milk and cheese sandwiches and ice cream and hamburgers and brats and anything you want to put cheese on, we've got it there. <laughs> and right. that's the fundraising component of it, right? <laughs> yes. So then yes. what do you guys do with the money raised? Uh, well, obviously St. Mary's Church and School, the, they use their profits to support their school. The sure. fire department supports their, or to help support their stuff. FFA alumni, we are there to support our FFA members, make sure that they can go to state judging mm -hmm. events, state fair, mm -hmm. um, Washington Leader Leadership Conference, which is coming up for oh, some nice. members. Um, so that is, that's what we use our funds for. And if you haven't gotten en enough cheese, there's another option to Calumet County Sunday on a dairy farm. <laughs> we also want to get that on people's calendar. Yes, uh, June 23rd, we are uh, have held, oh, holding Sunday on the farm at the Calumet County Fairgrounds from 11 until 3 p.m. This year, our focus, we do not have a host farm this year, so our focus is on the history. Oh, nice. Which has been 37 years it's been going. Uh, original host family was Don Schwab, just south of Chilton. We will be displaying all of uh, what we can all find for articles and pictures and stuff from the events over the years. Also providing a petting zoo kids activity. We have uh, a charcuterie board demonstration going okay. on throughout the event. Is it going to um, look as nice as that? You're going to teach me? It, yeah. All right. Yep, exactly. Deb will <laughs> teach you. Uh, we have an artesian cheese display along with cheese sampling. Um, my daughter is putting on a milking demonstration throughout the day. She's bringing some of her cows okay. down so you get up close and personal wow. with milking. Um, and that's pretty much covering the day's events. We are also offering cheese sandwiches and sundaes and something new this year. We are offering a grilled cheese burger. Oh, okay. Well, I think I need to attend this event <laughs> to try and sample just what that is. Mike, thanks for the work that you do year round to promote dairy. Two great events to get on your calendar.
Good morning, I'm Storm Team 5 meteorologist Alexis Staniak. We finished up the month of May very soggy, two inches above average for precipitation for the month of May here in Green Bay. And we begin our wettest month, which is June, also above average. Nice to see many areas across most of the Midwest are above average for precipitation. Still some spots like Des Moines, Iowa, now into Pier and as far south and west as Wichita, Kansas, still seeing a small to even extreme drought at times. Now as we head through the next week and a half or so, more precipitation is likely to be accumulated here in Green Bay. We're looking to see less precip than what we've seen for the past couple of weeks, only about an inch to maybe a half an excuse me, under an inch, so maybe anywhere from a half of an inch upwards to an inch, and then more rain will be accumulated further off to our west. Places like the Dakotas and through Minnesota will see more rain. Now, the Climate, Predi Climate Prediction Center has put just part of northeast Wisconsin in this above average category for temperatures, very above average through Minnesota and into the plains, and you can see uh, areas through northern Illinois. Southeastern Wisconsin are in the chance to go either above or below, so equal chances, and that's how we stay for June all the way through August. Most of the northern Midwest is in this equal chance to go above or below for precipitation. Below normal is expected further west of Wisconsin and then through the eastern part of the United States will be above normal. Now most of the country looking to see very warm temperatures as we head through the middle of the month of June. Very warm attempts expected here in Wisconsin and slightly above average temperatures expected as we head through the northern Great Plains and into June through August. Most of the country is expected to see above normal temperatures uh, all the way through pretty much till the end of summer. Stay with us. More Ag News coming up after the break. Well, Jeremy Hansen here from Fox Valley Technical College for Life on the Farm. And joining me today is Tim Poggle. Tim, thank you so much for your time once again. Can you remind me a little bit of what you do at Country Visions Co-op? Yes, Jeremy, thanks for having me back on. Um, I work with a lot of the growers in the area and help with crop plans and pest management and fertilizer recommendations. Right, and you've been doing this for a while, right? Yes, I have been doing this for a while. Yes. 20 plus years, I'll say. Right, right. Last year, we were talking, we were worried about the dry weather and um, germination of soybeans. And, you know, this year has been a little different so far, hasn't it? We've had a, quite a bit of rain in the Chilton area, correct? Yes, we have. We've got quite a bit of rain, um, has been leading to some ponding in some areas, um, also led to not getting some alfalfa harvested on time like we wanted. Right, and that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. What are some of the ramifications from standing water on some of these fields? I mean, it depends on, the, on when they were planted, of course, but what are you, what are you telling your, your customers? So, so far anything that was planted, I would say 12 days ago and is starting to push out of the ground, we're doing okay. Um, with this week drying up, that might just be a little bit of crusting for our late planted or our last planted corn. And also the water ponding, if it's over three days, we might be susceptible to having some uh, stands that will not be what we want. So that, that's a replant then, potentially? Yes. yes. Some of these, a lot of these fields have had both fertilizer applied and some pre-emergent uh, herbicides applied to them. What do we? What do you have to do now going forward with these fields? So moving forward, we'll do our second shot of uh, post-emerge corn and, on corn and beans, mm -hmm. and we'll be doing tissue sampling and PSNT sampling uh, mainly on the corn to see where we're at on fertility levels of what is actually left in the ground for us to work with for the rest of the year. And unfortunately, the ones that we did not get a pre on, um, those are going to be first out of the gate as soon as it dries up. Right. We're going to be on them. Right, and that, that was my, my next question for you. You know, a lot of some of these fields did not get sprayed yet, and they are green. There, there's lots of weeds coming. And I mean, are you guys set up to take care of that? Yes, we are. We are ready to go as soon as the weather gives us an opportunity and a window to do it. We have the equipment and the staff, so we're ready to meet that need. Yeah, then that's that's great to hear because it's going to be a, a few late nights, I'm sure, for 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 your for your crews. So, yep, it's worth it. Yep. So, um, final question for you, Tim. You know, it, it it's it's uh, we're referring to the rain over the Memorial Day weekend specifically, and it's going to be June soon. Um, are there's some fields that haven't been planted yet. Some you know, farmers have been working on their hay fields, things like that, harvesting their, their alfalfa. Are we switching varieties and relative maturities in our crops yet? Yes, on the corn we have switched um, drop down maturity. I believe a lot of the dates I hear for insurance for corn is like June 5th, so 
it gives us a little hope, but we got to have it on the floor in order, if the fields dry off, in order to get it planted. So right. we have switched on that, and beans will probably run until about the 10th of June. Okay. You know, Tim, you know, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that insight from you. And like, this is uh, unexpected this year, so it's, uh, I guess this is what farming is, right? It is. It makes it exciting. Yep. So thank you so much. Thank you. So for Life on the Farm, I'm Jeremy Hansen. Welcome back. As the school year comes to a close, applications are now open for classrooms looking to adopt a cow in the fall. Good news, you don't have to have your own barn. In the beginning of the school year, classrooms will be paired with a calf. They get to watch her grow over the next nine months. Students learn about agriculture, dairy farming, animal care, and how we care for our calves. Then depending on their distance to the partner farm, they will meet that cow virtually or in person. The program connects farmers and classrooms in 50 states and 38 countries. Schleiss Farms in Kiwani is new to this program and cannot wait to connect with kids. I think it's important for everyone to see how animals are raised. Um, these are, first off, they're not my pets, but they are very important to me. Um, I take great care in these guys. I spend many hours in this barn with my babies, making sure that they're healthy, they're getting the proper nutrition, they're clean, they got their water, they got clean food, they got interaction so they can develop into healthy, happy cows. And it's important that we share that with people who don't know what we do. Families, schools, clubs, and really any other community group can sign up for this program for free. Applications are now being accepted for the 24-25 school year. Your help is needed to support the second annual special drive at the Brown County Fair. We welcome organizers Nadia and Megan from Bayport High School. Good morning to both of you. Happy summer break, but no yes. rest for you ladies. You're pretty busy. Talk to us a little bit about this event. What is a special drive? All right, so a special, special drive is a pig show that gives students with special needs, ages 8 to 18, the opportunity to show a pig and see what that whole process is like. So the day at the fair, we go through from 3.30 to 5.15. They get to learn everything about showing a pig. They get to learn the training process. They get to learn the feeding process. They get to wash them and train them for the show ring. And then at the end, they actually get to show the pig. So this is all in one day. There's not a lot of prep work. Talk a little bit about who they are partnered with and what you need from people. So these students are partnered with two mentors from the Brown County Fair, whether they have swine experience or just livestock experience in general. They're partnered with two mentors to go through each of the sections that we give them to learn about. And you're from Bayport FFA. Talk a little bit about what motivated you to start this event. Well. It was 2022 in June, and we're at our officer retreat, and we're like, let's bring this idea to Brown County Fair. So we asked to do it in June, and this event takes a lot of preparation. <laughs> so I, the fair board is like, nope, we can't get it done in two months. Sure. So then we tried again last winter, and then we're like, yep, let's try it again. So it kind of just came an idea to us and our FA advisor, yeah. Miss Barnes, in our mind, and we just put our minds to it, and then... No happens. And it looks like you had quite the turnout that first yeah. year. What yes. do you need from the community? How can we help? Uh, I'd say we're still looking for more sponsors for our event, but besides that, we would really like some more kids to get signed up. Like we said, we have 12 spots open this year, so we're hoping to get some more people signed up for that and mentors from the Brown County Fair to help us out as well. And if parents are watching, this is open to a lot of different community members, yes. whether they are someone with physical needs or perhaps they are a person with autism, this is welcome to all. Correct. Wonderful. Now talk a little bit about signing up for that and then the, uh, the overwhelming emotion, I would imagine, as you saw this come to life at the fair. Just looking at the pictures for me, I could see that there was a lot of neat relationships built. Yeah, yeah so you can find our signups at the Brown County Fair website okay. under the events or if you go on Facebook or Instagram to Bayport FFA, the link is on one of our posts in there too. Okay, and yeah. you were going to elaborate on some of the yeah. uh, relationships. Something that was really cool is that the whole swine show barn was full. There was sitting room only and not even room for standing. For people that haven't been in that barn, it's kind of a tight. All the bleachers were full, were full. All the floor room was full. Everyone was there to support these kids that were in the show ring and showing for a day. And the kids, the smile on the kids' faces were just something that was really cool and something I've never seen before. And it's really cool to be able to put on an event and make kids happy like that. So with admission to the fair, people can join? 
yes. and be in the audience. Mm -hmm. And an even better way to support is by volunteering for the event. They need a lot of hands to put this together or sign up if you have a loved one, a family member who would be interested in showing during the special drive August 16th at the Brown County Fairgrounds. We will have a link to register in the Midwest Farm section of wearegreenbay.com. Congratulations on putting down roots on a successful event. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good weekend. You too.